Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're interested in home worm farming, you're in the right place. We have an active community of fellow worm farmers that just love to help each other out and be successful with their worms. Today is Red Wiggler Day. My four pounds of Red Wigglers live in my DIY stack system, which is three 10 gallon totes. I made that about four years ago. If you're interested in what upgrades I would make if I made it again today, uh, I will link to the last video in the series. As I take care of the bin today, I'm gonna go over why I think spring is the best time to start a new worm bin. Stick around to the end and there will be a sneak peek of the outdoor worm bin that we haven't looked in on in five months. Okay, first off at the top here, although the gnats are getting better, they are not gone for sure. So I'm gonna, I did have kind of a lid on this, so this is less dry than it was last time. We're gonna kind of just move things over and see what we have going on here. All right. Looks like we have a wannabe avocado tree. We'll see what the worms turn it into. This is actually a cocoa husk, where you get the cocoa beans from. I got a, a gift package of, um, I don't know, mixed tropical fruit around Christmas time, and the uh, Theobroma husk, well, and also the, the beans, were part of that. Um, I have a lot of springtails, which, you know, considering that they eat mold and they also do a good job of shredding things, it's not unusual to find them when you have a big fibrous item that needs to be taken care of. They are helpers in the bin, no problems at all. More of the cocoa husk. So that's, that's been about five or six months since that's been put in here. So let's see, other than corn cobs and uh, avocado pits, this is what it looks like. It takes about, I don't know, five or six months before it turns into paste like that and then it's gone. I know some people are like, oh, that's gonna take forever, never going to get done with that. Well, forever's a long time and I've got patience, especially when I know my worms and their buddies in the worm bin can get it done. And being that it is warm weather, they're gonna start eating more and more as it gets warm. So, in for the reasons for why I think that spring is the best time to start a worm bin. Number one, I guess if you're in a tropical area, it doesn't really apply to you, but here where I live, people don't want to ship worms when it's super cold out. So when it gets to be a decent temperature and everything is well above freezing, that's when you can start getting worms shipped to you if you don't live someplace near a person that farms worms. Now, if you look at this, you can see these little white specks are actually white mites. So they are the ones that are taking care of the really super hard things like avocado pits. I mean, the worms try and everything, but you know, they're not really the ones who get everything going. So I'm still digging here, but yeah, so I mean, they don't even really like to ship you things if it's too cold and there's a chance that the worms will die in transit. So you do have to wait for it to be spring so that you can get nice healthy worms delivered to your door. All right, well, it looks like they've eaten just about everything up on the top layer, so we'll probably feed on top this time. But let's check out the layer below. Okay, so in reading the comments from the previous video on this bin, people were asking, what are these things? These things were an idea from a person that watches my channel, Michael, and he said that he uses something to prop up the bin so that they don't compress. So these sit in the corner so that the bin above doesn't compress this bin here. So that's all they do. They just sit in the corner and hold on to the bin above, but I'm gonna take them out of the way so I don't lose them when I start fluffing through the bin. Another good reason to start worm bins or start thinking about doing worm bins in the spring is that at least around here, you start having garage sales and you can find a lot of things that you can build a uh, worm bin out of just mostly avocado stuff here. Thought I saw that. We had a cabbage that was trying to grow last time. 
thought I saw that in here. Anywho, uh, garage sales. I mean, you can always get like these bins or a tote or any kind of a big bucket or even a bathtub that you could use to make a worm bin out of that you wouldn't have to spend as much money as you would if you wanted to buy, you know, a professionally created um, worm bin. If the moisture down here is really nice, so that's good. I think it was a little dry last time. I'll have to put a picture in there of what we fed because I'm not seeing anything. It's been about three or four weeks since we did the last feeding of this bin. And that is about how often I feed my worms. I do feed pretty heavy, but I don't feed as often. Um, with my schedule, especially now with spring here, I am now in gardening mode. So um, I don't have as much time to devote to the worm. So I give them a good size feeding and let them roll for about three or four weeks. Let's look at the next layer down. Okay, so this is the bottom layer. And in the beginning, when I first made this particular stackable DIY bin, I thought I was going to make it similar to what you have when you buy like a vermi tower or, or something like that, where the bottom of it is going to be like a sump where all the liquid kind of drains to. Well, I think over the course of maybe three or four months, I had so many worms that came and drowned at the bottom that I thought to myself, self, that is not a good idea. Hmm. I don't know what that is. It smells like citrus. And so I thought, well, if there's gonna be worms down there, I should probably give them some bedding and um, food and stuff when they get down there. Most of the time I just put bedding down here, but on occasion, like last time I did feed down here because I think the worms come down here and then they, when they're little, they come down there and then they get stuck because the worm, the holes that go to this layer are only a 16th of an inch. So I think a big chunky worm is not probably, I don't know, maybe they can. Put your thoughts below. Do you think a full size worm can get in a 1 16th or what is it, two millimeter hole? Let's see, they have, oh, look at that. Ooh, I'm gonna put that on the top. This is them trying to grow me a mango tree. So I am going to pull that out because I lost a mango tree over the winter. I keep them as house plants, kind of like bonsais. And, oh, damn. Bugger. Man. Okay, make that two mango trees they're trying to grow me, but I think I just hurt this one. So I'm gonna still pull this out and see if it'll continue. And I don't know, we'll pull it out and see. Um, anyway, so I keep them as bonsais or house plants, even though in my area, of course, it's freezing and I can't have an outdoor mango tree. I can have a, a tropical, cool tropical plant. All right, we've got a bit of a worm ball down here. Good worms. Considering it's been four weeks, I didn't really expect to see much of a concentration in any one particular area. Because generally, once they've eaten all their food, then they kind of go about their way and mill around the bin looking for more stuff. Uh, you usually only get a good worm ball when there's still a little bit of food left. Let's see. Oh, there is a little bit of food left. It's a lemon. So they did have a little tiny bit of food left. And uh, if you're new here, you're probably thinking, oh God, no, not lemons. Uh, lemons are fine in moderation, just like with, with humans, you know. Uh, when I was a kid, I ate like four quarts of strawberries one time and I broke out in hives. A little bit of strawberries, good. A lot of strawberries, you get hives. So same thing with worms. I don't think they get hives though. But a little bit of even things that are considered to be forbidden food is perfectly fine. If it's uh, in any way harmful or not harmful, but if it's in any way not palatable for them, they won't go near it. They will stay away from it. And once the other bin critters and the bacteria and the fungus have broken down the forbidden food, then uh, the little worms will, this little guy's like trying to flag me down. What do you gotta say, little guy? What you, what you wanna say? He's a very sassy, sassy little worm. Might be a blue worm, he's pretty quick. For those of you wondering, blue worms or red wigglers, this guy's clitellum is flat to his body, which makes him a blue worm. And also the fact that he's very zippy and fast is also a reason why I believe him to be a blue worm. And that's fine. I have a lot of mixed bins that uh, 
and they work just as fine. In fact, the blue worms are tolerant of a higher temperature. So when it gets warmer, I mean, it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit in the basement right now, which is pretty dang warm. I'll put the Celsius up there for you, but that's, that's pretty dang warm. My basement does not usually get much warmer than this. So, okay, so these guys were fed on this layer last time, so we're not gonna feed them. We're going to assemble the bin again and start feeding where it hasn't been fed recently. Let's not forget to put these back in so that they can hold up the bin above. Another reason why you might wanna start a worm bin right now is because if you start now, you can actually have castings by the end of the growing season. So if you are in the Northern Hemisphere, it's early spring, only the, you know, the hardiest of things have been planted so far. So if you were to get a bin with a, a pound or two of worms, you could have castings to uh, set your fall vegetables with. Let's get them a little bit of food in here. The only thing they had left was the avocado shells. So I'm gonna just move some stuff over here I think the bedding amount is still good. We can still see individual pieces of cardboard. So I don't feel like I need to give them any more food. Yes, they need more food. They do not need more cardboard. So we've got some peppers there, some celery, some pineapple. Pineapple is a super slow food. We'll be seeing the remnants of that for probably another three or four months. So let's cover that up really well and put the top on. All right, hang on. Let's go look and see what the outside bin is doing. And now for the 2023 outdoor worm bin. Let's take all of these rocks off the top that were keeping the, I don't know, raccoons and whatnot out of it. Let's see what we've got. It spent all winter outdoors, nestled up against the house here. So let's see what we've got. I made some burritos and stuff out of fruit boxes. So let's see if everybody made it. Looks like some of those burritos still have stuff left in them, but the worms are doing wonderful. Look at those. Nice wiggly worms. Look like they're full-size adults. And uh, so you can see that little yellow tail. So that is a red wiggler here in zone five in Illinois. Most of the time we don't get things that stay, I don't know, because of the, the cold. It gets very, very cold here, but uh, looks like these guys made it. All right, I'm gonna cover them back up. They, it looks like they've got enough stuff to, to chew on for a while, and we'll check on them in a couple of months. Okay, here we are back up at the top again. Since the top hasn't been fed anything, since they got these uh, cocoa husks, I'm gonna give them a little bit of food up top as well. Let's see, we fed the peppers and the pineapple over here. So we're gonna go over on this side and feed them some more veg. And the liquid from it, or you know, some of the, the drippings, will go down to the lower level and that'll give the uh, worms on the bottom a little bit to eat as well. So again, celery, peppers, and pineapple. Cover that up. And in case you didn't know, I'm not sure if all countries have things that are the same, but Earth Day is in April, and I think that it would be a wonderful sentiment for you know everybody to start a worm bin in April to help save the planet and keep everything out of the landfill. All right, well, if you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.